Hello friends, today in this video we are going to learn about the preferences of the consumer. In the last video we have seen what is meant by the budget constraint of a consumer. Budget constraint of a consumer is group of all those bundles that the consumer can afford at given price and money income constraint. When we talk of the preferences, we talk of the best things that the consumer would like to purchase. So preferences deal with the best things for that consumer. We have seen that consumption bundle is the set of all goods and services that the consumer can afford at given price and money income. But when we talk of the preferences, preferences vary with the people. To know well about preferences, let us take two goods x1 and x2 where we will see goods x1 denote one good and goods x2 denotes all other goods. The consumption bundle of the consumer for the respective two goods would be x1, x2. And we say that let this be the affordable consumption bundle of the consumer. So let's take the consumption bundle x1, x2. Now moving over to describe the preferences of the consumer. When we talk of the consumer preferences, we suppose two consumption bundles to choose from. Let's say the two consumption bundles given to the consumer are bundles x1, x2. Let's call this bundle as bundle A and y1, y2 which is consumption bundle B. Now let us see the three different ways in which the consumer can behave. Let's say the first behavior of the consumer is when he strictly prefers one good over the other. So this will be called as strictly preferred. Let's denote this strictly preferred bundle with the sign as given here. Now looking at the consumption bundles A and B, if we write x1, x2 is strictly preferred to y1, y2. Here we have bundle A is being strictly preferred to bundle B. Now what does strictly preferred actually means? When we talk of bundle A, x1, x2 being strictly preferred to bundle B, y1, y2, we mean to say that the consumer would purchase the bundle x1, x2 when bundle B is available to him. When talking of the strictly preferences of a consumer for a given bundle x1, x2, in spite of the bundle y1, y2 being referred to him, we say that the consumer will definitely choose x1, x2, that is bundle A. Here, he is not going to choose y1, y2 because his behavior or his preferences are strictly inclined toward bundle A. In this case, we have seen that consumer is in favor of bundle A commodity. Moving on to the next type of preferences, which is 
indifferent. What do we mean when we say that the consumer is indifferent between two given bundles? We denote the indifference of two bundles with the given sign. When we say that commodity or the bundle x1, x2 and the bundle y1, y2 are indifferent for the consumer, we say that the consumer is indifferent between bundle A and bundle B. Here we can say that he is just satisfied with both the bundles. The person doesn't mind which bundle he is choosing either bundle A comprising of X1 and X2 commodity or bundle B comprising of Y1 or Y2 commodity. When both the bundles are offered to him he can either choose bundle A X1 X2 or he can choose bundle B Y1 Y2. This is because of the consumer behavior. The behavior may vary for each and every consumer. The third way in which the consumer can behave is he can weakly prefer one good over the other or one given consumption bundle over the other bundle. Let's say that weakly preferred goods are denoted by the symbol as shown in the figure. If we say that bundle A is weakly preferred to bundle B, we mean to say that X1, X2 is weakly preferred to Y1, Y2. What we really mean with this preference is that he can either prefer A even when commodity B is offered to him. In this case, the consumer thinks that bundle A is at least as good as bundle B. We can relate all these three preferences of a consumer as when we say x1, x2 is weakly preferred over y1, y2 and also say that y1, y2 is weakly preferred over x1, x2. When Bundle A is being weakly preferred to bundle B and bundle B is being weakly preferred to bundle A, we can say that the consumer is indifferent between both the bundles. Hence, we can conclude that X1, X2 is indifferent to Y1, Y2. The consumer can choose any of the two given bundles as he regards both the bundles being of same value. Hence, he is indifferent between two consumption bundles X1, X2 and Y1, Y2. On the other hand, if we are saying X1, X2 is weakly preferred to Y1, Y2. But if we say X1, X2 is indifferent to Y1, Y2, we do not mean the same thing because a consumer in the first case weakly prefers X1, X2 bundle over Y1, Y2 bundle. Whereas in this case, the consumer is indifferent between the bundle X1, X2 and the bundle of goods Y1, Y2. Here, he thinks that X1, X2 is at least better than Y1, Y2. Whereas in this case, he thinks that X1, X2 is as equally good as the bundle Y1, Y2. Now let us look at the assumptions 
for the preferences of a consumer. We usually make some assumptions about how the preference relation works, what are the preconditions required for the preferences to function. So we have three different assumptions given. The first assumption or the axiom treated here for the preferences is complete. The second axiom says that the goods must be reflexive. And according to the third, we have the bundles must be transitive. For the first two cases, we will be comparing only two given bundles. Whereas when we talk of the transitive bundles, here we take three bundles. Let's try to analyze all these three assumptions one by one. Complete. Let's say we have two bundles. A and B. which can be compared. Here we say bundle A comprise of x1, x2 and bundle B comprise of y1, y2 goods. And they can be compared. Complete simply means we assume that any bundles can be compared because unless the bundles cannot be compared, the question of preferring one bundle over the other does not arise. Let's see how the bundles are being complete bundle A and bundle B. Here we can say the consumer weakly prefers x1 x2 over the bundle y1 y2 or we can say that the consumer prefers y1 y2 bundle weakly over the bundle x1 x2 the consumer is indifferent when x1 x2 is weakly preferred to y1 y2 and y1 y2 is weakly preferred to x1 x2. Consumer can make a choice between two bundles. Here the consumer can either choose bundle A or he can choose bundle B or he can choose any one of the given bundles. So here we can say that bundle A and bundle B are comparable, hence the two given bundles are complete. Looking at the second assumption, the second assumption says the bundles must be reflexive. What we actually mean by reflexive is each bundle must be at least as good as itself. What we simply mean here is that the bundle x1, x2 must be weakly preferred over the bundle x1, x2. This means each bundle must be at least as good as itself. The weekly preference should be reliable either on any of the bundles comparing both the bundles with itself. So this is the case of reflexive. Considering the third assumption which talks of transitivity, the bundles must be transitive. We have already seen that when we talk of the transitive assumption, we have to take three different bundles into consideration. Let the three different bundles be A, 
comprising of x1 x2 goods b comprising of y1 y2 goods and c comprising of z1 z2 goods here if x1 x2 bundle is weakly preferred to the bundle y1 y2 and the bundle y1 y2 is weakly preferred to the bundle z1 z2 then we assume that x1 x2 is weakly preferred over the bundle z1 z2 we can say that we reach to this conclusion from 1 and 2 let's see how we reached to this conclusion arranging equation 1 and 2 in a line we have x1 x2 is weakly preferred over y1 y2 and here we have y1 y2 being weakly preferred over z1 z2 hence we can conclude that x1 x2 is weakly preferred to z1 z2 It's a hypothesis about people's choice, how the person will behave and prefer one good over the other. Let's see a situation when the consumer cannot choose one good over the other. Let's say bundle X is weakly preferred over bundle Y and bundle Y is weakly preferred over bundle Z. At the same time, we say that bundle Z is weakly preferred over bundle X. We have three different preferences of same consumer. Now, if we consider preference 1 and preference 2, we can conclude that bundle X is weakly preferred over bundle Y and bundle Y is weakly preferred over bundle Z. From here we can conclude that bundle X is weakly preferred over bundle Z. Now taking into consideration preference 1 and 3. Here we have the equations as bundle X being weakly preferred over bundle Y and bundle Z being weakly preferred over bundle X. Rearranging this equation we can see that Z is being weakly preferred over X and X is being weakly preferred over Y. From here we conclude that Z is weakly preferred over X. Now contradicting situation A and B. In A we have X is being weakly preferred to Z. Whereas in B we are saying that Z is being weakly preferred to X. Thus we can say that these three cases of preferences of a single consumer cannot exist together. The consumer has to make a clear choice which bundle X bundle or Y bundle is preferred over one another. Thus in this case we can see that the consumer cannot make a choice because the preferences are changing or varying. This was all about preferences. We can explain these preferences with the help of indifference curve. We will learn about it in the next video. Thank you.